All right. So let x determine a random variable and use your knowledge of probability to separate, to prepare a probability distribution. What are they talking about? So they're saying the family has four children and the number of girls is recorded. Assume an equal chance of boy or girl. Complete the probability distribution. So what, what is that talking about? That's saying, so you've got to focus in on what the thing is they're, they're looking at. Um, what is the thing they're looking at? Where is it? Um, there it is. Family has, and the number of girls is recorded. Number of girls is recorded. So this means zero girls, one girl, two girls, three girls, and four girls. Four girls. All right. So we're supposed to, so family has four children. What's the probability they have no girls? So and prob, P of X means probability. So basically, if you have four kids, what's the chance you're going to have no girls? What's the chance, you assume it's 50-50, which it, it is close to 50-50. What's the chance you're going to have no girls, one girl, two girls, three girls, and four girls? They've already got the three girls answer and the four girls answer for us. Chance you're going to have four girls is one sixteenth. If it's 50-50, it's like flipping a coin or something, right? So how do we, um, how do we figure this out? Which tool... Tree. Yeah, how do you know tree? Because it's event after event after event after event, right? You have a child, then you have another child, boy or girl, then boy or girl, then, right? So it's a big old tree. It's like flipping a coin four times. So the first one, the first child you have is a boy or it's a girl, one or the other. I predicted girl. My wife and I didn't have, we, we didn't ask the doctor ahead of time. I don't know, we just thought it would be fun. And... Um, but then my, and, and I called the first one as a girl and was totally wrong. My wife correctly predicted all five based on hormonal feelings. Some, some people can tell. Some people, the girls were more hormonal. Anyway, all right. I still remember the, the, the funny one was our fourth child, Johnny. I've had three girls, two boys. Our fourth child, Johnny, came out, and, he, and he's got my ears. I mean, even bigger. He looked like Dumbo coming out of the, the ears just unfolded, you know. Anyway, but it was funny. So the, the nurses, I was in there, you know, and the fourth child, and, and then nobody knew, nurses, anybody. I don't think they'd looked at it, so nobody knew. And so they were kind of interested, boy or girl, you know. Just the head pops out. Just J-Man, Johnny Man's head pops out. Just the head. And the nurse goes, it's a boy. I remember thinking, it's just the head, right? <laughs> I mean, are you, and then, then, then she, she pauses and goes, it, it, isn't it? I mean, good thing, you know. It was kind of, then the rest came out, and yes, <laughs> it was a boy. I guess he had a boy head. All right. So, um... Boy, so this is the first child, second child, like that. I wondered if that gal had been to nursing school. She was, there's a certain anatomy she's supposed to be looking for. All right. Boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl for the third child. And then one more time for the fourth child. Boy, girl, boy, girl. Boy, girl, it's getting kind of... Boy, girl... Well, I'm running out of room badly. Uh, well, I guess I got I don't. I got to get it together, I guess. All right. What else can I do here? And finally, boy, girl. Okay, I'm going to put the endings here because each of these is a result, isn't it? Okay, here we go. So what's the overall results of, of all of this? It would be boy, 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 boy. Four boys in a row. Or boy, 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 girl. Right, I'm just, I'm just following the trees. Right, boy, 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 girl. See how I'm following that? The next one. Boy, boy, girl, boy. Boy, boy, girl, boy. Boy, boy, girl, girl. Boy, girl, boy, boy. Boy, girl. Boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. Did, did I do that? I'm getting confused. Um, oh, and the two more, and then, this isn't, I, I should have made this bigger, 
boy, girl, girl, boy. There's boy, girl, girl, girl. Okay, there's halfway. There I'm halfway. Now for the next, now, now it's a whole thing starting with girl. Girl first. And girl, boy, 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 boy. Girl, boy, boy, boy. Girl, boy, boy, girl. Girl, boy, girl, boy. Girl, boy, girl, girl. This is getting crazy. Um, I shoot. I should have made this bigger. I'm just like, let me try again. Sorry, it's just running out of room terribly. All right, first child, boy or girl. Second child, boy or girl. Third child, boy or girl. And finally, fourth child. This is third. Third, and then fourth. And you got to have enough room, or you just can't see it. Boy, girl. Boy, girl. You got to write a little neater than I do. Boy, girl. Boy, girl. Boy, girl. Boy, girl. All right. So now, what are all the results? Here's halfway. So this is boy, 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 boy. So just follow the tree to the end. Okay, so there's half of them. Now the other half. You guys tracking with me? Have I lost you all completely? This is very tedious. Girl, boy, girl, girl. All right, girl, girl, boy, boy. Girl, girl, boy, girl. Girl, 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 boy, girl, 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 girl. Whew. There they are. All right. 16 results. 16 results. Up there. Okay, so we got that whole tree. This will be on YouTube if you want to see that later. I better move on. Already eight minutes in this problem. So what, what do they want from me now? Let me get rid of this stuff here. What is their question? They're saying, so what's the chance you have zero girls? So that's P means probability. X is the number. Of, how knows? That's what they said here, number of girls. So what's the chance you have zero girls? And this means one girl. Uh, zero girls? This is the only result with zero girls, huh? One out of 16. It's one sixteenth. That's how they got the one sixteenth four girls. That, that's right here, huh? Chance you're going to have four girls is one sixteenth. It's just a half times a half times a half times a half. What's the chance you're going to have one girl? Exactly one girl. Well, there's actually a few ways you could do that. You could have one girl first and all boys. You could have one girl second. Where's that one? Here. One girl second and all boys. You could have one girl third and all boys. And you could have one girl fourth right here and all boys. See? Girl fourth, girl third, girl second, girl first. And all boys. There's four possibilities out of the 16 that have exactly one girl. Four out of 16. So four sixteenths reduces to be one fourth. There's a one fourth chance you're going to have exactly one girl. How about two girls? Two girls 
Well, we're going to have to underline these things. Two girls. Where's this? So I'm just going to go down the line here. Here we go. Two girls right there. Two girls right there. I'm just underlining them. Anything that has two G's in it. Two girls right there. That's three of them. Two girls right here, four. Two girls right here, five. Two girls right here, six. I found six ways of having two girls, depending on the birth order, you know. Everybody see what I'm doing there? I just, with the underline in the blue, having two girls. Am I losing you? How are we doing there? So I just underlined in the blue the six different ways you can have two girls. So that's 6 out of 16. Reduce that, 3 eighths. 3 eighths is the probability of having two girls. Finally, there's one more of these. What's the probability of having three? Oh, they already got it. We're done. Good. I want to be done. There we go. That's what we call the probability distribution. In other words, all the different things that can happen and their probability. This making sense. So in other words, we're looking up here for probability, and we're saying, hey, we're going to have four girls. We're going to have four kids. We're going to have four kids. What are the different things that can happen? We could have no girls. I would have been, I would have been sad if I had no girls. I think I like girls better than boys. Is that bad? Is that bad to say? I love my boys. They're great. But there's something sweet. I've got three girls. There's something sweet about girls. Um, so, so the probability of having, so you're going to have five, four kids. I had five, but four kids. They're probably going to have no girls, one sixteenth. Probably going to have one girl. Because you're either going to have no girls, one girl, two girls, three girls, or four girls, right? One of those is going to happen. If you have four kids, you're either going to have no girls, one, two, three, or four girls. What's the chance of no girls? One sixteenth, one girl, one fourth, two girls, three eighths. That's probably the most likely. Yeah, it is the most likely. Three eighths is the highest probability, isn't it? Because uh, one fourth is two eighths, so this is higher. Three girls is a fourth, and four girls is a sixteenth. That's the probability distribution. Distribution means like passing out, like you distribute something, a flyer or something, right? That's the distribution of the probability. That's the, all the different things that can happen and their chances. That's what a probability distribution is. Is that making sense? So I just figured out all those probabilities based on that big old honking tree of having four children. Questions? Good. Abilities pass themselves out. What are the different things that can happen? That'd be, that'd be like if I said, hey, today we're either going to have rain, we're going to have, it's going to be hot, or it's going to be nice and cool. For example, you know, no, no rain, no rain, but cool. So I could say it's either going to rain, or it's going to be really hot, or it's going to be no rain, but cool. There's a 20% chance of rain. A uh, 30% chance it'll be hot, and a 50% chance it'll be cool with no rain. That would be a probability distribution, for example. The different things that might happen and their chances. Getting the idea of what a probability distribution is? Just all the things that can happen and what their chances are. All right, so in this problem, in particular, they're saying four coins are tossed, and the number of heads is recorded. Shade the region on the histogram, that means bar graph, that gives the indicated probability x is greater than 2. Okay, now what it, these are kind of weird at first if you're not used to them. Let me help with that. What is this x greater than 2 thing? What is x? Well, x is always, they'll, they'll say it quick. Just like in the last one, you know, they, and you've got to watch it. They'll, they'll, they'll say it quick, but it's really important, so you don't want to miss it. Um, like, let's go back to question 1. How did we know we we're talking girls? Right here. See, that's just three little words, but like that's the most important thing in that sentence. The number of girls is recorded. That meant that X, and then I wrote girls, 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 because that's what X is. So X is our variable, and it's whatever they say it is, but they'll say it quick. Okay, so let's go back to number three. What are they saying they're recording? Right, it's all right here. It's record, right? Recorded. So X, X is always what you're recording. So what are they recording here on this problem? What does it say they're recording? Number of heads is recorded. That's your X. So whatever's being recorded, that's what you're focusing on. You know, it could be a lot of things. 
Like I, the one I said would be the weather. The type of weather is recorded, hot or cool without rain or rain, right? Type of weather is recorded. The number of heads is recorded. The number of girls is recorded. That's your variable. That's your x. So number of heads is recorded. So then when they say x is greater than 2, that means number of heads is greater than 2 because x, again, is number of heads. So number of heads is greater than 2. If I say, hey, number of coins in my pocket, it's greater than 2. What does that mean? How many coins could be in my pocket? Three or four or five, so you know, three and onward, huh? Greater than two means three or more. So that could be three. So number of heads, X, which is the number of heads, is three or four. Or, well, how high can it go? Four. Only four coins were tossed, huh? So it's three or four. Does that make sense how I determine that? If we're talking, if X is the number of heads and we're only tossing four times and it's greater than two, then it's three or four. Okay, so then look at these graphs. Which one of these graphs has shading? Um, oh, I guess, yeah, that's, it's going to be this one, isn't it? But they're, they're also shading the two. Why are they doing that? It said, I thought it said greater than two. Oh, yeah, no, I'm wrong. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it is, and I'm just wrong, not looking. It's that one. Yeah, it's because it's, it's not the two. It's three or four. Thank you. I'm just spacing out. It is C. It's greater than two. It, it, it doesn't include the two. It's just three or four. Answer C. Good on that. See how the shading is on three and four. And what are those bars? Those bars are the probability. The probability that you're going to get three heads is 0.25. Probably you're going to get four heads is whatever. I may even tell the number here. Probably you're going to get two heads is 0.38. That's telling the probabilities. We don't know how they figured that. Well, actually, all they did is they made a big tree like we just did for the boy-girl thing. That's all that is. Anyway, they're not asking us about that. They're just asking us which graph. See. So we're going to get into this whole area called expected value. Okay, so what do they mean? First of all, let me just give you the calculation. It's pretty easy. It's called expected value. And, um, and, and all you do is you take x times p of x plus the next x times p of x plus the next x times... Oops, kind of getting scribbly here. The next x times p of x, these are multiplied here, plus dot, dot, dot. That's all you have to do for an ex Now, what it is in the real world, just a second, I'll tell you. But for now, let's just get used to swinging the hammer, and then we'll talk about what we're going to build with it. So here's the tool, getting used to our hand on this hammer, this tool called expected value. What is it? You just simply take this times this, it's so 2 times 0 0.1. So I'm doing the x times the, the probability of that x. And then the next one, 3 times the 0 0.4. You put it in parentheses if you want or whatever. And then the next one, 4 times 0 0.2. And then the last one, 5 times 0 0.3. So what is that? Just hit the buttons on your calculator. I will too. I'm getting 3.7. Did you get that? Expected value is just x times p of x. Let me start to give you, I think it's always helpful to be real with things. What it is, is it's, it's what you expect to happen when you do this random game. It's, it's, it's the way of giving, it's a probabilistic average. In other words, what they're saying, they're saying, hey, you're playing some kind of weird game. Roll a die, whatever, whatever, spin a spinner. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's a spinner. How about that? That kind of looks like what it is. Maybe there's some kind of game with a spinner. Okay? And on this spinner, uh, yeah, 
on this spinner. A big area has a three. A small area oops, has a two. And um, another area has a four. Let me try to do this a little bit better. Wait a minute, I just totally messed up. Let me try again. Okay, so. So. There. What if I had a spinner? Okay. I'm going to spin a spinner. I'm going to spin this spinner, and it's going to land. It's going to end up being pointing at two, three, four, or five. I'm going to spin the spinner. Round and round it goes. What's the most likely number? Three. Well, three. Three has the biggest area. See why I did that? Because three had the biggest probability. 40%. It's using up about 40% of the area, just under half. The two is only using up 10% of the area. It's the smallest. The four is using up 20% of the area, twice as much as the two. The five is using up 30% of the area. So I made a spinner that kind of reflects that probability. See how, see how that, that's it be an example? You're going to get a number. So suppose, suppose it's this game, and you're going to spin the spinner, and it spins around, and, and basically where it lands, you know, whatever, whatever happens. Would you, how about if they had this game at the casino? And they said, all right, this is a spinner game, and this is exactly what the casino calculates all the time is expected value. This is how you know what you could expect on average from any random game. What if you're at the casino and you say, I'm going to play this game with a spinner, and the casino says, okay, spin the spinner, and whatever number it ends up will pay you that amount. Will pay you that amount. So if you spin the spinner, you might end up on two, or three. Three would be most likely, huh? Four, and maybe even five. And you'll get that amount. Now, um, what if they said, what we'll do is we'll charge you $3 to play this game. So every time you spin the spinner, you've got to pay $3. To, to do it. But then they're going to pay you back the number it ends up on. So if it ends up on a three, you break even. You pay three, they pay you back three, it's no loss. If you end up on the two, you lose a buck. If you end up on the four, they're paying you back four, you made, you made one dollar. If you end up on the five, they pay you back five, you made two dollars because you paid three, let's say, to play it again. Would that be a smart game to play? In other words, would you expect to make money or lose money in the long run at that game. You guys track it with me. You spin this, three dollars. Let's say casino says three dollars. Spin the spinner, and they'll pay you back the number on the on the spinner. Would you expect? I mean, sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're going to lose, sometimes you're going to break even. How do how do you answer that question? Is this a smart game to play? Are you going to make money? You answer it by expected value. It has an answer. It has a very definite. Answer. Even though, yes, things are random, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you break even, there is something that will happen after a thousand spins on average will start to take over. It's called the law of large numbers and probability. Isn't probability a weird area? Have you ever thought about probability for a second? It's weird. I mean, because it's random, and yet there's likelihoods. I mean, like our weather. Our weather's random. It's a little cooler now than we normally expect, isn't it? But you can, and you think, yeah, okay, now is there any chance that summer, you know, we're headed, we're headed towards, uh, well, this is May, we're headed towards June and July in Fresno, any chance it's going to rain all the way through July? No. no. It might rain one day in July, maybe two if things are crazy. But there is no way it's going to be 70 degrees and rainy all the way through the month of July, unless something catastrophic has happened to our atmosphere. Something wonderful, actually. That'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? That's happened to our weather. That ain't going to happen. So you get the feel of probability. Yes, there's randomness, but there's also predictability within that randomness, right? Well, that's the same way with casino games and what, or anything random, not just casino games, but anything random. And, what, and, and there's an average. Like There's going to be an average temperature in July, isn't there? And it's going to be like 90-something, right? Even if it rains once or twice... The average is going to be high. I guess if you count the nights, maybe the average isn't 90. But it's high. It's going to be a high. So, in the same way, you play this game. Yeah, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But you play this game a thousand times, something very predictable will happen. The law of large numbers will start to take over. And probability becomes not so random in reality. Well, how do you figure out what's going to happen? That's the calculation we just did. 
That's what the 3.7 is. That's the average result. That's what's going to happen on average. So every time you spin it, on average, you're going to get a 3.7. Now, you can never get a 3.7 on one spin. You can get a 2, a 3, a 4, or a 5. Right. But you're going to usually get 3, sometimes 4, sometimes 2. It'll average out to 3.7. That's what the expected value does. It says the chance of 2, the chance of 3, the chance of 4, and the chance of 5. Add it up. That's the average result you can expect. In other words, if you do this a 1,000 times... It'll be super close to the same thing as if you got 3.7 every time, even though you can't get 3.7 even once. That's what it'll be like. So then you can answer the question quite easily. If the casino was charging $3, would this be a smart game to play? Yes. Yes. Thus, they won't charge $3. Yes, because you'd win on average. You'd win 70 cents on average. If they charged $3... You're going to get 3.7 every roll on average, every spin on average. So you're going to be making 70 cents per spin on average. Now, you can't make 70 cents on any one spin, but if you do that a thousand times, the average will be super close to like you made 70%, 70 cents per spin. So a thousand spins at 70 cents a spin, how much money is that? If you spin this thing a thousand times, a thousand times 70 cents profit, because you paid $3 and you made 3.7 on average, so you made 70 cents. 1,000 times 0.7, 700 bucks. So if the casino put this game up, I'd be the first in line. I'd be like, yes, I've been waiting for this kind of game. I guess your mathematicians fell asleep when they designed this game, because this game has a positive expected value, which none of the games in the casino have. See, they calculated it. It's not random for them. They know exactly how fast even they're going to make money. It's not random. They know, they know based on how many plays, on average, what they're going to make. They know exactly what it is. Even though, yeah, some people can win and lose and cut, you know, can have a good weekend or you know, whatever, on the average, it's going to do the expected value. It's exactly what it's going to do. So in reality, what they would do is they would charge $4 for the game. So then on each roll, you'd be losing $0.30. Cents. On average, sometimes you'd win, sometimes you'd break even, Right? But they know, in the long run, if it's $4 charge for a 3.7 game result, they're going to be, the house is favored by 30 cents per roll. So after 1,000 rolls, you'll be losing real close to $300. And you can just count on it. That's why I'm always saying, if you're going to gamble, you want to, you want to think this way, because this is the truth. No matter what they say, winning is here! That's where I get a little irked, right? I already did my speech about how that bugs me when I, that's like the cigarette company saying, smoke, it'll make you more healthy! I think that's just bald-faced lying in the face of all the statistics we know better, all the data that is said otherwise. Right? That's what it is when those casinos say, winning is here. No. They know very well exactly how much they're going to win, how fast they're going to win it. They should just be honest. They should say, hey, look, it's fun. Cost you a little money. Come out. I'd be okay. I wouldn't have an issue with them if they were more honest about that. All right. So they know, and if you, as long as you think that way, you're okay. You're like, hey, I'm going to lose some money and I'm going to have some fun, then they don't got you. But those that think they're going to win, that's when they're... All right, finally, expected value. What is expected value? Um, so it's the same thing. Expected value is just... Um, it's x times p of x. x times p of x plus x times probability plus x times probability, da, da, da. You don't need these parentheses. It's x times p, x times p. So how do it? What are the x's? Well, see, this is the x-axis down here. It's a little weirder with a graph. This is the x-axis, so x1 times, what's the p for that? Yeah, can you see it right here? Looks like 0.15, huh? Plus the x of 2, what's his height? 0.1, it looks like. Are you tracking with me? So you see the x, you find the x, and then you go across for the p. So this is the p-axis. So this is p, this is x. Y'all see how I'm finding those? We have to just keep going, right? Does it make sense? So for x equals 1, the probability looks like 0. 0. 0.15. The chance of getting a 2, whatever this game is, is 0. 0.1. The chance of getting a 3 is what, 0. 0.2? It looks like. chance of getting a 3... Looks like point 0.2. Chance of getting a 4, 4.5. Four 
before is like, was that 0.5? And the chance of getting a 5 is 0.5? Oh, 0.05. This should be 0.05, huh? I was just, I was testing you. Good job. Yeah, that's 05, not 0.5. That's like 5 cents, not 50 cents, huh? Thank you. See how I did those? Not making sense? And then you just add those up in you with your calculator. Somebody got that? 6.752? Anybody else getting that? I'll do it just to double check. I got 3.65. What'd you get? Okay, yeah, double check your calculations on that. Looks like a couple of us got 3.65. Oh, yeah, and the, and the answer can't be more than 5, huh? Remember, it's the expected number. We're either going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. We expect to get 3.65 on average. Remember, that's what expected value is. It's a probabilistic average. It's probably what you'll get. It's the average result you will get in that random situation. You guys getting those okay? Hitting those buttons? I'm going to move on if you're okay with that. 3.65. Feel free. All right. Um, in roulette, the numbers from 1 to 36 are evenly distributed between red and black. Player whose bet is $1 in black wins one, gets one back. If the ball comes up, Black. Otherwise, the ball ends in red, zero, double zero, one dollar bet is lost. Option, one option for that is to bet eight dollars in red. If the ball ends in red, you could keep the eight and you're awarded, and you are awarded ten. The ball ends in what white ten? I thought. One option in roulette is to bet eight dollars in red. If the ball lands on red, you get to keep the eight and you're awarded ten. If the ball lands elsewhere, you're awarded nothing and the eight that you bet is collected. What is the expected value of the game? Okay. Very, very good. Okay, so we can do an actual expected value calculation. This is exactly the calculation the casinos do. All right, so what's expected value again? You've got to, what you've got to do to do it is, is you've got to do the, the various values, and you're going to times them by the various probabilities. I'm going to do it vertically now instead of sideways. I think it'll make it easier. So I'm going to list it, and when I say values, I'm talking money. I'm talking actual money that will change hands. Positive means for us, negative means lost to us, if money goes to the casino. So, okay, so let's think about this. So you guys understand the rules. You got this roulette wheel thing. If you get, what does it say? How many are black? There's one to third, so there's, there's numbers. 1 to 36, 0, and double zero. So there's 38 numbers total, 38 spots. Is that making sense? 1 through 36, those are half black, half red. A green zero and a green double zero. I told you, right? I think I told you a story. My son was at a Fresno State Frisbee tournament last year in, him, in Las Vegas, and him and his buddy, uh, in between games, they went to the casino, and they said, hey, yeah, come on, let's just go in. My son has heard all my speeches about all the calculations, so... He knows better than to try anything crazy. But he's like, yeah, let's just... So they each took a $20 bill, and one put it on red, one put it on black. They're like, one of us will win. And it came up green, the green zero. <laughs> you know, just they were both gone. Anyway, so there's 38 things total. 36, one, two in the greens. And um, if the ball... Yeah, da-da-da-da-da, where are we here? The player who bets... Okay, I'm getting lost. Where, okay, so, so, so think about what real life... Try to be as real as you can with this. You're in there. What are they having you do? One option. They want me to do this option here. One option is you bet $8 on red. If the ball lands on red, you keep the 8 and you get 10. Otherwise, you lose the 8. That's the exact game they want me to do expected value for. Does that make sense? So if you're thinking, I'm going to play this game. I'm going to bet 8 bucks on red. Roll the thing. If it comes red, I, I, win. I keep my 8 and win 10. And otherwise, I lose my 8. Okay, so think real life. What are the various values monetarily? We'll get to the probabilities in a minute. Let's just start off with, do you see that only two things are going to happen monetarily to your bank account? 
based on the result of that game. When that thing is spun and the result is done, there is one of two things. You're either going to win money or lose money. If you win money, how much money will you win? Ten bucks, right? Positive ten dollars, right? Because you keep your original eight and they pay you ten. You made ten bucks. That's one thing that could happen. You win ten bucks. Positive ten. But if you lose, if it's not red, it doesn't come up red, you lose, and how much do you lose? The eight dollars you bet. So it's negative eight because you lose it. It's negative to your bank account. Does that make sense how I came up with those two? Those are the only two things that are going to happen financially to your bank account each time you play that game. You're either going to make 10 or lose 8. Did you all catch that from the words? I'm not seeing any response. You guys are all giving me the poker face. You're playing cards with me here. You're giving me the poker face. Is that making sense? So I need to keep talking about that some more. Do you, do you see that? Right? You're betting 8. It says, and if the ball ends on red, you keep the 8 and you are awarded 10. So you made 10. The eight you just kept, that, that was already your eight. You just made ten, though. You're awarded ten. If the ball lands elsewhere, so if it's not red, you get nothing, and the eight that you bet is collected. You lose the eight. So those are the two financial. You're either going to make ten or lose eight. So those are, when I say expected value, remember, is, is value times probability plus value times probability, right? That's how we always do it. It's value times probability, value times probability, value times probability. So we just have two different values. And now I just need to multiply by the probability for each of those and add them up. And that'll be my average, my expected value. So what's the probability of this first one here? What's the probability that I'm going to win $10? How do you win $10? If the ball lands on red. But what's the chance the ball's going to land on red? How many red? And there's 18 red and 18 black. And this is green. These are both green. The zero and double. This is... You understand that the zero and double zero are just two different slots that are both green. So there's, right, half, the 36 numbers, one through, are half green, half red. Sorry, half black, half red. And then there's the two green ones, the zero and the double zero. So 18 red out of 38 total is the chance of landing on red, huh? Remember, probability is always out of total. So this will be 18 out of 38 is the chance that you'll win $10 on red. That's the probability. And what's the chance you'll lose? you not get red? The 18 black, the green, and the other green, 20 out of 38. A little more likely. There's 20 spots because the 18 black and the green and the, the zero and the double zero are the two green ones, like happened to my son. Right? multiplied together. Going to multiply those together. Because that's what you do for expected value. I did it sideways here. I hope I'm not confusing you. I did it sideways here. I'm just doing it vertically now. I think it might be easier. I'm just multiplying value times probability. Value times probability. So 10 times 18 38 minus 8 times 20 38 equals whatever whatever your calculator tells you there. It's going to be some decimal thing. I think they'll take a decimal answer. Um, so here we go. So 10 times 18 divided by 38. I'm just going, my calculator, I'm just going 10 times 18 divided by 38. The bottom is just, all the fractions just divide, right? Minus 8 times 20 divided by 38. Careful, I, I typed the wrong thing at first easy to do that. Um, I'm getting 0.526, um, it's positive, round to the nearest cent, positive 0.53. Did you get that? What, what does that positive 0.53 mean? What, what, what about the real world does that mean? What's that? Not chance. That's the average winnings. In other words, every time you play this game, on average, you will actually win positive, which means this kind of game would never be at the casino. They're all negative at the casino. But this, this would be a mistake by the casino mathematicians. A positive point fifty three. In other words, you would expect to win 53 cents. Even though you can never win exactly 53. That would be the average. That's going to be the average winnings. Every time you play this game, on average, you would win 53 cents. That's because they're paying you more for winning than losing. 
they wouldn't do that because that would make the average positive, which means the casino would go bankrupt. Everybody would take their money. You'd win on average 53 cents. So if you played this game 100 times, you'd win $53 probably. Just multiply that by 100. 53 cents on average each time you play. That's the average winnings each time you play. So you play 100 times, multiply by 100, 53 bucks. Pay 1,000 times, win $530. Pay 10,000 times, $5,300. You get the idea? See why they would never make it positive? Because you just play a million times, you can make whatever amount of money you want. Right? They never have them come out positive. Good so far? Everybody good with that calculation? So we're learning how to calculate all the expected values of lotteries and things like that here. So you invited to play a game. You bet $1 on any number from 0 to, zero to, zero to 5 to 9. If your number comes up, you get 450 bucks. Find the expected winnings. So expected winnings is expected value. It's the same thing. So I need to do the, va the various values, the monetary values, and the probability of each of those, and I'm going to times them and add them up. Right? Okay, so think about this game. Think of you're going to play this game, which means you're going to do what? You're going to bet $1 on a number. Okay, so there's two things that can, you're going to either win or lose, right? Can you write for me the dollar value to your bank account of winning and losing? Go ahead and do that. I think it'd be worth it for you to try it first. So first write down the money. What will happen to your bank account if you win? What will happen to your bank account if you lose? Those are the two value amounts. So write those in. Just think about what it says in real life in your bank account. Give you a second on that. How are we doing? What? So if you win, so if you win, what what will happen to your bank account? You get four hundred and fifty dollars. Bless you. Um, and if you lose, what's going to happen to your bank account? You just negative one, right? It's positive four fifty. Winning is positive and losing is negative to your bank account. That good so far? Now, the one question I have, honestly, I'm not sure. Well, I'm going to type in the answer, and so I'll find out. They might, I wonder if they keep that dollar so you really only win 449 You know what I mean? Because they, they pay you 450 but I wonder if they're going to say that original dollar never comes back. They're not being super clear on that. On a test, I'll be crystal clear. So you'll know what to do. So I'll try it this way and see. It would slightly, very slightly alter the answer, whether you get that original dollar back or not. Does that make sense? I'm assuming you get the dollar back right now. Right? If, I, if I don't get my dollar back, then I don't really win 450. I only win 449 because they kept my original dollar. They're not being super clear. I'll assume I get my dollar back. Let's see what happens. What's, now we need the probability. You've got to multiply. What's the probability of winning? What's the chance you're going to win? Well, how many numbers are there from zero? This is a fancy way of saying zero, huh? From zero to 599. Well, from one to 599 is 599 numbers, right? One, two, three, right? So then if you throw in zero also, 600 numbers. Does that make sense? How there's 600 numbers, actually? From one to 599 is 599, and then the zero is 600 numbers. So what's the chance you're going to win? One out of 600. Right? You're only betting on one number out of 600 total. Remember, probability always has total at the bottom and on the top, you know, the number of ways of winning. There's only one number. And what's the chance you're going to lose? What's the probability of losing? 599 out of 600, huh? Remember, total always goes on the bottom. 
So remember what we got to do now? Just multiply those and add them up, right? So just do, so on my calculator, what I'll do, what I'm going to literally type in on my calculator, so I'm going to go 450 times 1 over 600 minus 1 times 599 over 600. That'll be the average value or expected value. I'm getting minus 0.2483333 uh, nearest cent. So minus 25 cents. Let's type that in and see if it's there. So yeah, so you round. They want you to round to the nearest penny. So 24.8 rounds to 25 cents. And it is negative, which means what does that mean? You expect to lose a quarter. Now you think, well, how do you, you can lose a quarter? You either lose your whole dollar or you win $450. Yeah, but on average. Remember, that's on average. There's no way to, in other words, if you do this tons and tons, play a game like this, like the lottery or something like that, tons and tons of times, it'll be like you're losing 25 cents every time. That's the average. Every now and then you'll win, but most of the time you'll lose, and if you average it all out, it'll be like you're losing 25 cents every time. That's what expected value is, average, what you expect to happen. Wait, so casinos, What's average? So the What's that? casinos gain a quarter? Yeah, yeah, so the casinos gain a quarter. So that's how they can, and they calculate this, so that's how they know. They, that's why it's a science for them. It's exactly what it is. It's not random, hope the gamblers have a bad month, we, we're low on our paying our rent. No, the casino knows precisely because they've calculated this out. So they know, like, hey, we're going to have 1,000 people play this game. We'll be taking 25 cents from each one on average. I'm not saying they're cheating the games or anything. They just know the probabilities and the values. So if 1,000 people play this game, move the decimal three places. So if the casino has 1,000 people play this game, move the decimal three places, they're going to make 250 bucks. They know it. They just know it, like science, right? So they shouldn't put on the signs winning. They know better. They're lying. Raffle offers a first prize of $1,000, two second prizes of $300, and 23rd prizes of $10. If 8,000 tickets are sold at $0.25 cents each, find the expected winnings for a person buying one ticket. Now, this one's going to come out positive because they're not charging us anything. All they're giving is the prize on this one. Notice there's nothing about the cost of the ticket. Do you see that? So they're just having us figure out average winning. Nothing. So it's gonna, the answer's going to come out. There's nothing negative in this problem. There's no cost. They're not letting us, they're not bringing in the cost of the ticket. So, all right, fine. We'll just do the normal thing. We just know the answer is going to be positive. So, what are the various values, the monetary values, and the probabilities? Ooh, we're about five minutes. We've got to move here. Probabilities of each of those. Maybe I better lay this out quick. So, um, one first prize of $1,000. You could win $1,000. What's the probability of that? One out of 8,000, right? 8,000 tickets are sold. So you're going to multiply those. Next, you could win $300. What's the probability of winning $300? There's two second prizes. So two out of 8,000. That makes sense? Out of 8,000 tickets, two people will win second prize. So the chance you're going to win... A second prize is 2 out of 8,000. See how I'm coming up with that? <coughs> Next, you could, uh, 23rd prize is of $10 each. You could win $10. There's 20 out of 8,000 chance of that. There's 20 out of 8,000 total people that will win $10 each. Oh, no, they are sold. Oh, I didn't see the price here. 25 cents each. They're sold at 25 cents each, aren't they? So what should we do that? So there's uh, find the expected winning a person buying one ticket. So, so really, they're each going to lose 25 cents on their ticket. You know what you could do? You can subtract the cost at the end. Let's do that. Since we've already got this, I hope I'm not confusing you. Just figure this out first. That'll be what you will make on average. And then just subtract the 25 cents by what it costs to play the game. So let's do that. So use your calculator. When... All 
I'm getting 0 0.225. 0 0.2 positive, 0.225. So the expected winning is positive 0.225, but the cost is, is a negative, so I can just subtract that at the end. So now what we expect to win when we play this game is, is 22 and a half cents, basically, 0.225. The cost of a ticket is 25 cents. So you subtract that at the end. Now, I could have subtracted that from each of these. Yeah, I hope I'm not confusing you by doing it. I just, I just didn't notice that until the end. So you can just subtract the cost at the end. Does that make sense? You can always just put the cost at the very end. This is what you expect to win but this is what you will pay for that one ticket. Subtract that, and you get 0 0.025, don't you? So that's minus 3 cents. Basically, you expect to lose 3 cents for buying a ticket. Is that OK? When I subtracted these, I, I rounded here because they make me round to, to the nearest penny. So 2.5 rounds to 3. 0.025 rounds to 0.03. What's that? It didn't like it. I like it. Yeah, they changed to cents. So that's minus 3 cents. Yeah, I was still in dollars. Yeah, minus 3 cents on that. Is that good? Is that making sense on that? Sense, it's a pun there. All right. 